You click this video because you want to know which characters are the best to climb with in multiverses. This is going to be a ranked tier list. Whether you want to know your main, whether you want to main something and you want to know if it's good, this is going to be the tier list for you. I'm also going to say the same thing that I say in every single tier list for every single game that I do. This is not going to be the top 1%, the top pro play tier list. It's not about that. This is gonna be a tier list for anyone who wants to reach about diamond, maybe a little bit further, but for the most part, once you get really high like that, picks don't matter. Whatever you play, whatever you play well matters way more. So this tier list is not for that. But for everybody else who wants to know what's strong and what's not, let's get into it. So the first character on our list is Arya. Now Arya is a difficult character to master. We already understand this, but her game plan is pretty simple. Do this into that, into that, and there's a KO. The issue with Arya is that the execution to the character is hard to pull off. And although she has a couple of simple moves that you can do, you can still mess them up, you can miss them. Character interactions might be weird, especially when you're dealing with stronger characters. So in my opinion, Arya deserves to be under free loses. Now what I mean by this is that you're gonna lose way more than you win until you learn how to play Arya properly. And even though you learn how to play her properly, you might still end up getting beat out by stronger characters. That's just how this game goes. So this is something to think about when you're thinking about maining Arya, is you're gonna be losing a lot. And even if you play well, you still may end up losing losing because the character is not as strong as all the other characters. So the next character that we have up is Batman. Now I always hated Batman. No I didn't. Dude's fast. The dude has a tool in his kit for everything. The character is annoying. But Batman is not broken. And I think some people may get that confused in thinking that he's broken. The thing that makes Batman strong is that his kit is very well designed. When a kit is very well designed, no matter how many nerfs or buffs they get, they still remain relevant. In my opinion, Batman deserves to go under free wins. Even if you're in an even if you're an inexperienced Batman player, you will probably win more than you lose just off the fact that you're playing Batman. As you get better at Batman, not only as you get better as a player, but as you get more creative with Batman, because he has a tool for almost everything in the game, you will start dominating matches and you will win way more than you lose. So I think Batman deserves to be under free wins through and through. The next character that we have is Bugs Bunny. So Bugs Bunny has been hit with a lot of nerfs in the past and um, it, it, it definitely quelled his, uh, his power. Uh, that being said, it doesn't mean that Bugs Bunny is bad. It just means now you have to learn how to play Bugs Bunny and not learn how to play the cheap way of Bugs Bunny. In my opinion, Bugs Bunny deserves to be under win some, lose some. When you first start out, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. And as you end up getting better at Bugs Bunny, you're going to start winning more than you lose. But I think he's pretty solid to where he's at. You don't need to use his entire kit to really make this character work. However, once you learn how to use his entire kit, this is where Bugs Bunny starts to shine. But again, you don't need to use that to actually get wins. It's not that difficult. So Bugs Bunny, in my opinion, is going to be under win some, lose some, especially when you are inexperienced at him. And then as you become more experienced, I think he can easily move up to free wins um, because, again, he's kind of versatile like Batman, but he's just harder to play than Batman. The next character that we have is Finn. So a lot of Finn mains, <laughs> every time I talk about Finn, a lot of Finn mains like, bro, Finn suck. The thing about Finn is that he's very fast and his hitboxes are pretty big. Now, of course, going against other characters that have even wider ranges or even bigger hitboxes, Finn's gonna probably suffer a little bit, but the thing that makes Finn strong is the fact that he can kind of put you in a blender and he can really keep you guessing. Now, a lot of his stuff in terms of his, his, his health swords, they're very predictable. Based off how Finn is holding his sword, you know which move is gonna come out, which means you can kind of react accordingly. That being said, that doesn't mean Finn ends up being bad because he's predictable. The fact is Finn is still very quick and that's the thing that makes him good. Especially when you buff his, his armor or you buff his speed, then he becomes even more of a threat. So you can kind of think of Finn like one of those characters that has to gain resources to be good, but once they gain resources, they're actually extremely broken. So I think Finn deserves to be under win some, lose some. You will definitely, and I think he deserves to be in front of Bugs Bunny, you will definitely win more than you lose as a... Um, Actually, no, I lied. I'm gonna put him under free wins. He's harder than Batman, but he can give you free wins even if you don't really know what you're doing. And as you get better at Finn, you will start getting more and more wins. That being said, when you go against an experienced player that reads that 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 cheapness that you do, um, <laughs> for lack of better words, 
thin players can be cheap if they want to, but if they read that, then you're gonna have to actually know how to play thin. If you know how to play thin well, like if you know how to play the character and not the cheese tactic that he does, you are gonna get more wins. If you're just a cheese tactic Finn player, he's probably not gonna be rewarding you. But with this list, I'm gonna assume you know how to play your character, um, how it's supposed to be played. So with that, Finn should be under free wins for the sake of the matter that not only is he fast and his hitboxes are big, but he also can buff himself into Oblivion, which makes him really, really good. I say into Oblivion, even though, you know, it's, it's really only two buffs and a BMO, but you know, he's good. On top of the armor break, on top of the corner carry, the dude is good, don't even. The next character that we have up is going to be Garnet. Now Garnet actually had some um, buffs to her and I was actually hyped to see the buffs and I wanted to make this tier list later into the season because I wanted to play the game. I wanted to see what it was like. I didn't wanna go based off of like the patch notes. I wanted to actually see what people are doing and how they're functioning and play these characters myself. When we're talking about Garnet, the buffs help but they do not actually make her better. I always classified Garnet as like a Mario character or um, I don't know, like a like a <laughs> like a Ryu character. It's basically a character that's like, okay, Ryu, I lied because Ryu is very, very good. But with Garnet, she's very simple and she teaches you how to play the game. However, when you're playing against people who understand how to play the game, Garnet then starts to kind of be a little bit lackluster because Garnet it has a ceiling. You know what I mean? Like she has a ceiling to where like you can only become so good. And at, once you're at that ceiling, you can't get any better. The way you're gonna end up winning with Garnett is you're gonna have to be creative. You have limits. You have to understand that you have limits. Once you figure out that you have limits, you're gonna have to be creative because if you're not, everybody's gonna understand Garnett's gonna do this, 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 and then we beat you. You're gonna have to get creative. You're gonna have to pull something out of your butt every now and then to keep us guessing. That's kind of the point with this get creative section is you're gonna have to keep people guessing if you wanna actually win the match. Doing the same thing because the character is so simple is gonna have you just be red and it's gonna have you lose. So I don't think Garnett is bad however her ceiling is very low compared to the other characters and you are really gonna have to go out your way after you learn how to play her properly you're gonna have to go out your way to you know keep people guessing and and really get your advantage that way the next character that we have is harley quinn oh harley quinn used to be a terror dude harley quinn used to be so unhealthy for the game but they 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 did their job they um they nerfed aspects about her i think she might have been hit a little bit too hard but she's not really in the same spot that she used to be. That being said, if you know how to play Harley Quinn well, then it didn't really do too much to you. But for the players that didn't really know how to play Harley Quinn and, and, and they kind of just got away with like button mashing, that's not there anymore. And that's a good thing, right? You should be rewarded for playing your character well. You shouldn't be rewarded for just hitting buttons. So I think that Harley Quinn should be under win some, lose some. As you get better at Harley Quinn, she's easier than bugs in my opinion. As you get better at Harley Quinn, you'll end up in free wins in no time. But as she stands right now, especially after those nerfs, she's just kind of under the win some, lose some. Um, if you really don't understand everything to the fullest. And even if you do, honestly, because Harley Quinn players generally do the same thing, like <laughs> whether you're like an advanced Harley Quinn players or like, um, or like the general Harley Quinn players, they kind of do the same thing. It's just they do it in a different way. They have the same setups, they kind of, so like, as you become more experienced, that doesn't mean you're automatically gonna win more if players understand how to play against the Harley Quinn. So again, you're gonna have to be creative like Garnett, but Harley Quinn is way more useful with Garnett. Harley Quinn has way more tools than Garnett. And so you will end up getting more free wins as long as you keep mixing it up, right? And you actually understand how to play Harley Quinn. But as of right now, I do not think that she is just crazy broken. I don't think that she'll give you free wins off the bat. You are gonna have to put some time into her to even get to that level. So um, that's where I think Harley Quinn is. Next up, we have Jake. So Jake is one of those characters that are kind of similar to having their skill, skill ceiling pretty low because they don't really have a lot of ways to do things. Yes, you can do this, you can do that, you can do that. But after you play with a Jake for about, I don't know, 30 seconds, 
you can kind of see everything that the player is going to do and then they just do the same thing over and over again very rarely i run into a jake that actually does a lot of things usually they do a couple of moves and so with that in mind if that's how you're going to play jake you're going to have to get way more creative and even when they start using the other moves it's not really about jake being um it's not really about jake being weak or strong it's just that there the moves are so weird that it, it takes a lot of effort from the player to actually make the, 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 the moves work. And again, even if you make them work, Jakes don't use all of their moves. They use a little bit of their moves. And so you're going to be red really easily. The way you're going to win with Jake is you're going to have to be a lot more mix up focus and you're going to have to get a little bit. You're going to have to have a few more moves in your arsenal than the average Jake. Right now, I feel like he's going to be under get creative. Maybe if they buff him in the future, give him a little bit more wiggle room with a couple of his moves so they're not so telegraphed. They don't look all the, they don't look the same. They're not avoided the same. You could pretty much avoid all of his moves kind of the same way. Um, once they kind of deal with that, if they plan to, I mean, maybe he's where he should be, you know? But as of right now, I think he's under get creative. You're not really going to go too far with Jake unless you get creative and, and make some stuff happen. Rain Dog is interesting. And I've always liked Rain Dog. Rain Dog used to be my main, if you guys didn't know that. Um, but I don't main Rain Dog anymore. But Rain Dog. Rain Dog is special because Rain Dog is, I think they're, I'm pretty sure they're the only character that they made from scratch. It's not a character from any series or any movies or anything like that. So I think they were just kind of putting their whole, you know, they're making some stuff happen. They didn't really have much to work with. That being said, Rain Dog clearly was created with an identity of being a support character. He wasn't created with the identity of being a solo character. That doesn't mean you can't fight with Rain Dog, but you know, a couple of his moves just don't really help with solo play that well. So in my opinion, again, he's gonna be under Get Creative. It is a character that doesn't really have a lot of tools at his disposal in 1v1s, and the ones that he does use, they're, you can kind of see it coming. It's not hard to avoid. You're gonna have the lightning in the, in the air, right? You're gonna have the fireballs. You're gonna have the, um, the, 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 the air twist move. I can't think of it right now. You're gonna have the ankle checker move. Like, uh, you already, it just does the same thing. You're not gonna get, go against two, three, four rain dogs and them do things widely different. They play the same because they, they're limited in their tools. So I don't really know what they plan to do with that. But if you're gonna play a rain dog, if you're gonna be a main a rain dog, you're gonna have to get creative. Um, otherwise, this character is not gonna serve you well at all. The next character that we have is Shaggy. So Shaggy is pretty good because Shaggy has a lot of ways he can do things. You have two types of Shaggy's. You have the spammer Shaggy and then you have the actual like combo heavy Shaggy where they where they lock you up and they'll, you know, they'll get they'll, they'll get you. I really like those Shaggy's. Even a spamming Shaggy is kind of a pain in the butt even if you're experienced, don't get me wrong. But when 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 a Shaggy knows how to play some Shaggy, oh, it's nasty. It when they use the sandwiches well, uh, when they when they use their combos, when they use their with their their lockups, like dude, dude got game. In my opinion, I think that Shaggy. Oof, that's hard, dude. The thing is, with the one v one tier list that I did before, it was there was no ranked, right? But when you're playing ranked, you assume that players know how to play ranked more or less. You assume that they know their character. So with Shaggy, especially the higher you go up, hmm. You know what? I'm going to put him under Winsome, lose some in front of Harley. The thing is, Shaggy, like I said, has two ways to play. You have the spammer Shaggy, which will get net you some wins for real. And then you have the, the like the actual Shaggy players. That being said, I don't think Shaggy's broken. He's just annoying. He's very annoying to go against, but he's not broken. And a lot of his stuff is kind of telegraphed because Shaggy, Shaggy players tend to do the same things over and over and over again. Now, when I say that, I don't mean like they're spammers, but like usually they have the same setup. They usually do the same things. And so you can kind of read them eventually. That doesn't mean you auto win, but it does mean that like, it isn't just like, oh, let me load up Shaggy. I'm getting free wins. That's that's not how it's gonna happen, especially when you're dealing with ranked players that understand how to beat the spam Shaggy and will then understand how to beat you spamming the same moves over and over again, um, the same setups and stuff over and over again. That being said, once you get good at Shaggy, and I mean really good at Shaggy, Shaggy has a lot of tools in his kit, and I think he deserves to be in the free wins, but he deserves to be in the free wins when you get to that level of Shaggy gameplay. Otherwise, Shaggy is just under win some, lose some, you know. Um, if, you're, if you're a god, you'll have free wins. If you're not, 
he's just there. He's like, you know, hey, play some Shaggy. That's pretty much it. There's nothing special to this character, really. Um, he's like, he's in a good spot, in my opinion. Next up, we have Steven Universe. So Steven Universe, I spoke about this character during my first tier list. I spoke about him and I said, bro, this character is not okay. He's busted. He's unhealthy. He's, you know, like he needs to be nerfed. A lot of Steven Universe players were like, bro, he's not broken, he's not this, he's not that, he's perfectly fine. And then, what do you know, the next patch that they dropped, I think it was a mid-season patch, they nerfed him. He was broken. And I think sometimes when people main a character, and not even sometimes, all the time, when people main a character or fancy a character, they don't understand what's strong and what's weak, they just think that their character is balanced. And that's not the case, and this is exactly why developers don't listen to players all the time because if you main the character you might assume that it's okay when it's not especially because you're not on the receiving end of it that being said steven universe had a lot of tools at his disposal and a lot of its hitboxes were massive and he had the ability to lock you up and like he he was just too too good now after these nerfs i think steven universe is still good but I don't think that he's amazing to the point where like you can just turn off your brain and get some wins. That's how he used to be. I swear that's how he used to be. Now you're gonna have to get creative. And even if you do get creative, um, it doesn't mean you're gonna win. I think that Steven Universe will still give you more wins than loses, but in a ranked format, I think that Steven Universe When you play about like 30, 40 games of this character, he'll move up to free wins. Steven Universe is kind of a weird character at the start. So like, I'm gonna give him some leeway about that. But like, as you get about 20, 30, 40 games of this character in, you're gonna be able to easily go to free wins. He's actually still really strong in my opinion. And he has a lot of tools that are very hard to deal with. And when you become a god with this character, like, yeah, you put some time into it and you learn he's free wins. But when you become a god with this character, it's a wrap. All bets are off. It's a wrap. You're about to go ham. So um, I would put him higher. But again, this list isn't for people who are gods at their character. This is a list for people who are, um, like I said, wanting to reach diamond or wanting to reach maybe a little bit higher than that. Um, if you put about 20, 30 games into this character, he will be free wins. Uh, you know what? We'll put him under free wins. Because I would assume if you're playing ranked, you have about 20 to 30 games under this character. We're going to put him there. I'm, I'm trying to think about people who might be inexperienced, but that's not the point of this list. The list means that you probably play your character. And either you play them or you want to get into them, which means you kind of know something about them already, or you played them a little bit. Um, I think he deserves to be up there. I actually think he deserves to be in front of Finn because he's heavier. Finn is, is pretty weak. Um, at least I think he's heavier. Finn is pretty light, whereas... Steven Universe is basically a tank, so it's hard to get him out anyway, especially if you don't really have any kill confirms, especially if your character isn't really kill confirm heavy. So I think he deserves to be right there. Next up, we have Superman. So Superman used to be one of my mains as well. I main the crap out of this character. Um, great character. His heat vision is a little finicky, and I keep, I keep speaking on this because, man, I swear that misses, like, most of the time. You really have to aim the heat vision for it to hit, otherwise it's not going to hit. I don't know if that's, like, a, a network error or what. They haven't fixed it, so I'm going to assume maybe it's, like, a network error or something like that. But with Superman, very predictable. You already know what he's going to do. Um, he's very spam-heavy most of the time. Um, the key has the same kind of setup combo thing that he does. He's going to get you into kind of, a, like, a little lock and try to carry you to the side of the screen. So, like, you already know what Superman's going to do before Superman does it. And the fact that he's really, really big also means that he's combo food. It means that the fact, it means that people can just kind of spam, especially things like Samurai Jack. They can kind of spam and, you know, they can get him. So, I think meta right now is definitely focused towards characters that are very quick and characters that have a lot of zoning potential and stuff like that. So, I think with this meta right now, Superman is probably not that great. Um... I'm going to say that he needs to get creative. I think he's way ahead of these guys, though. But I don't have anything in front of that. Um, he's, he's he's just super predictable. Like, you know what he's going to do before he does it. And it's up to the player that you're going against to really understand that. Once you get creative, once you start mixing in things, and this is what I used to do when I played Superman a lot, is I would start mixing people up. Like, they would think that, oh, he's going to do this, he's going to do that, and then I would just do something totally out the blue, and they're like, what the heck? That's how Superman is. You're going to have to do that because the skill ceiling, again, is not that high. He's gated by his tools. He has way too many tools, but they're not really useful. They're kind of gimmicky tools. They're kind of tools where it's like, it's Superman, how can we portray Superman in the game? 
this is what we're gonna do. So, um, although I know that they were gonna add, I don't know if they added it yet, because I haven't touched them, but um, I know that they're gonna add their his, his perk. I'm pretty sure that they added it in already. Maybe they didn't. I touched them in season two, but I don't think they added them. I added it when I played it. Maybe they did. I don't remember. Regardless, they're gonna give him another perk because the other perks were horrible and I would never take them. Uh, but there was another perk that was coming back. That being said though, again, he's still very simplistic and you're gonna have to get creative for him to work. Otherwise, you're gonna take those L's. The next one that we have is Tom and Jerry. So Tom and Jerry is one of those interesting characters because the tools that Tom and Jerry have are very good. And you don't need to actually play Tom and Jerry efficiently for Tom and Jerry to work well. Um, a lot of people think you do, and that's always something I spoke on about this game in particular, is that players usually think that if a character has a lot of tools at their disposal, they're automatically hard and they're automatically um, going to be uh, taking more loses, and, and that's not the case. A lot of these characters in this game, especially because the game is beginner friendly, remember this, it's a beginner friendly game. A lot of the characters don't need to use their entire kit to do anything. They can use one or two and call it a day. Tom and Jerry are, you know, he's one of those characters. Well, they are one of those characters. I think they deserve to be under win some, lose some. Um, I'm going to say he's at the back because you still have to kind of manage Jerry more or less. More or less. You don't really have to. But there's more to him. That's actually kind of hard. <laughs> That's rough. Okay. Um, I'm going to do this. Ooh, that's rough. I don't know. Tom and Jerry is kind of mixed with bugs. The thing with bugs is like, Tom and Jerry stuff is so strange and weird. And there's a little, everything has a use for his kit. Bugs Bunny, his kit, everything doesn't have a use. And what I mean by that is like, not every move you pull out is going to be good at that specific time. Tom and Jerry, everything that you throw out will be good at that specific time. It doesn't matter what you're going to do. It'll be fine. It'll work. Good job. So I think that I think that Bugs deserves to be behind Tom and Jerry. As far as Harley Quinn goes behind Bugs, that's rough, dude. That would, we're going to Harley Quinn has to get closer than Bugs. So, I don't know. Yeah, Bugs is like a disjointed hitbox that is really, really good. Charlie has one too, but it's not as good as his. So I'm gonna put Harley behind them. There we go. All right, next up we have Wonder Woman. So Wonder Woman received a lot of nerfs in the past. She received nerfs, I think, on both balance patches. Or even more than that, I think. It was three, but two for sure. She, she got hit. Um, the thing that makes Wonder Woman really good is the fact that she's heavy. The fact that all her buttons do something good. This is a character that has, no matter what you press on this character, it will work. No matter, it will work. And, um, and like, she's, she's very easy to execute. It's not really that hard. And she's quick. She's very quick. I think, I, th okay, so there's two types of Wonder Woman. So there's like Wonder Woman players that haven't figured her out, figured her out yet. And then there's a Wonder Woman players that have had, that have, <laughs> that have had. <laughs> there's Wonder Woman players that figured Wonder Woman out. And there's Wonder Woman players that haven't figured Wonder Woman out. If you haven't figured Wonder Woman out yet, I think that she deserves to be under win some, lose some. Majority of players are going to be this type of Wonder Woman. However, if you have figured her out, she's going to be under free wins without a doubt. The character is very, very good. But again, most Wonder Woman that I've seen haven't figured her out yet. They haven't figured out what to do to get the most out of it, right? As I said, every button works, and so that's what they rely on, is like, well, I'll just press the button, because it works. But like, there are some buttons of hers that kind of work better at certain times, and if you can really figure, if you, if you really want to do that and learn how to play Wonder Woman like that, then she becomes more free wins for you. She, 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 she's hard to deal with already, and so when you become a good one, she's gonna be really, really hard. But again, it's not about being a god at the character um, right now. This is just about 
playing the character. So if you're not a god, you're going to be under win some, lose some. It is what it is. But when you become really good at her, she's going to be stomping. The next character that we have is Velma Dinkley. So Velma has received, I think, a few buffs. Multiple times, actually. And I think that she... She's better than what people think she is, in my opinion. I think a lot of people that are... I always say this... Velma is the type of character that will like tell you you suck. Like, there's not a lot of characters in this game that are like, oh yeah, you play me, and you, if you do poor, um, I'm gonna tell you. A lot of the characters in this game will just work. But Velma is one of those characters where it's like, bro, if you suck at Velma, you're not gonna win. Like, you need to be good at Velma. And once you're good at Velma, she is different. So, how am I gonna rate this one? Because, again, this character is not about, this is this character. <laughs> This tier list is not about being a god. It's about playing the character. I would assume if you play Velma decently. I'll put her under free loses. Like, even if you play her decently. I'm going to put her behind Arya, though. Yeah. Even if you play her decently, you might still need to get better before you can start win some and losing some. And then if you get really, really good, like really, really good, then you can get free wins. But like, that's a very small percentage of Velma players. Most Velma players are going to get free loses at the start. And as they start playing more ranked, get about 30 games under their belt, maybe 40, um, they will easily move up into the win some, lose some. But they're going to they're gonna have to want to do that. And that is a very hard thing to do when your character doesn't have a lot of tools to deal with a lot of these really, really strong characters. So, um... That is where I think that is. Hmm. That's hard. I kind of want to switch her to the get creative. But, okay, yeah. I'm going to switch her to get creative. The reason why I say this is because Velma actually has a limited amount of tools to do certain things. Like, her moves do certain things. Like, if you ever watched Velma or played with Velma or played as Velma, you know that there's some moves that do certain things and some of those moves just won't work at certain times of the match. This means that you are going to have to get creative or you're going to have to use the same few moves. If you use the same few moves, you're going to be red. It's kind of the similar case as um, as Garnet or Rain Dog, where it's like you're, you're kind of capped. We know what you're going to do and we know the, how we're going to deal with it. That being said, once you start getting creative, you'll start winning more. And so that's why I feel like it shouldn't really be under free losers because that's kind of incorrect. You could still win a lot more with, with Velma because she doesn't need to do things in specific orders like Arya. So you can kind of just do your own thing and still make Velma work. That's why I think I'm going to put her under Get Creative and not under Free Loses. The next character that we have is Taz. So Taz. <laughs> I love Taz. So Taz is a noob stomper. Taz is one of those characters where it's like, bro, you've never played against a Taz. You're about to be in for it. However, the more you play against a Taz, the more you start to know his tactics. Taz is gated. Taz is gated by a lot of things that he can and can't do. There's a few moves that Taz will pull off. And even with the recent nerf where he can't hold the sandwich forever, uh, it, it, it becomes even more exacerbated. Like, he he is definitely one of those characters where it's like, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. And in order for you to do anything well with this character, you're going to have to get creative or you're going to just start losing and losing and losing and losing because majority of them do the same thing. And so I'm going to actually put him in front of Superman because it's not fair to say that Taz is like, not good because Taz is good in my opinion, but he's good at being a noob stomper. He's good at beating people who don't understand what he does, who doesn't understand his priority of his attacks. Once you figure this stuff out, this character becomes a lot easier to beat and it'll be up to the player that's playing Taz um, to really put their foot down and start doing some things to be creative. I've played against majority of Taz players that will do the same thing. And there's another small percent of Taz players that are like really creative. Like they are creative. They're throwing some stuff out. And I'm like, I forgot Taz even had that move. I played against about 20 Taz's and they, none of them did that. That 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 is how Taz is right now. You're, you're gonna have to get creative. But once you, once you do, 
once you do you'll start mopping but i don't think he deserves to be under free losers because that's incorrect and i don't think he deserves to be under free wins because that's incorrect and i don't think he deserves to be under win some lose some because again that's incorrect you will win when you're playing against somebody who doesn't understand and you will lose when you play against somebody who does it's up to you as a player to get creative and start getting more wins based off how you're playing that character the next character that we have is iron giant for everybody and their mama swear that this character is broken <laughs> I have yet to see it. There, I think the thing that makes Iron Giant like broken in people's eyes is like there's certain things, certain moves that he can do, um, which is why he keeps getting nerfed. There's certain things that he he he, he could do, and he'll just keep doing that over and over and over and over again. There really isn't much mix-up game to this character. There's a there's a flow chart to Iron Giant, and what a flow chart is basically means I do this into this into this. And that's how it works. If I do this and I do, and maybe you do this, then I go this way. If you don't do it, I go this way. And it's, it's a flow chart. It's kind of telling you where, where to go and what to do. And that's how Iron Giant gameplay is kind of focused around. They've been nerfing those type of things. So there is less of a flow chart. However, I, they, they also made him lighter too. Um, however, I... I don't know. Iron Giant is like a weird character, dude. Hmm. Uh, shoot, dude. I'm going to put him on, under... Get creative. The thing is what I just said is Iron Giant's kind of like flowchart heavy. They don't do anything. They do the same thing over and over. If you played against one, you probably know what the next one's going to do. There's not really much variance in how, how Iron Giants play. And it's funny because Iron Giant is not gated. Iron Giant has a lot to, in his kit. But players just aren't using them. Very small, very small percentage of Iron Giants players that I've went against have actually, um, have actually like done more than just that. So I think he deserves to be here under Get Creative. Um, next we have LeBron James. So <laughs> LeBron James, I don't even have to. This is bro easily, easily free loses. I'm gonna put him in front because I think he's easier to pull off than Arya. Um, LeBron James. Free loses. The reason I say this is because his ball mechanic is very weird. After you get used to that ball mechanic, he starts raising up in power. So like when you get when you play about twenty to thirty, uh, actually remember we're basing this off people who understand the character already. Okay, so in that regard, we're gonna put LeBron James up here. I think it should be higher because like, if you are playing ranked, you should know the character at least by twenty games. And so you'll learn the mechanic. The better you get at that character, the more you'll win. As simple as that. LeBron kind of carries you a little bit, even if you're not that great. If you're inexperienced, he'll still carry you. It's kind of whatever, but it's gonna get to a point where it's like, okay, you need to be good now. And if you're not good with them, you're, you're not gonna win. But once you get good with them, once you get better than average with him, you will start winning more games. He's a very solid, versatile character. And I think his kid is amazing considering he's playing with a basketball. Like, you would never think that that would be a good kid, but they, they did a good job with this character. And I, I think that he's a great character and he has a tool for kind of everything. Um, even if he doesn't have his ball, you would assume, oh, LeBron sucks without his ball. That's not true. He's weaker, but he doesn't suck. And I think that's a misconception. So I definitely think he deserves to be here. I lied. LeBron is slow. So we're going to put LeBron actually in the back. <laughs> LeBron is slow, but... But, 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 as I said, should you get better at LeBron, he's going to go to free wins in no time. Like, this character, the reason he's not under Get Creative is because, like, even if you're not that great at him, he'll work. The characters under Get Creative, if you are not good at them, you will lose. Period. Everybody else, you, you, you can still kind of win, even if you're not that great at them. All right, next up is Morty. Morty, I had some problems with a long time ago. Again, under the same realm of Steven Universe, where I was like, bro, this character's broken. Everybody's like, no, he's not broken. Only the Morty mains. I swear, like I said, anyone who mains a character always thinks the character is balanced. It's not. That's false. And wouldn't you know, a patch or two later, Morty's nerfed, right? And for good reason, because the character's broken. So a lot of the things got adjusted. A lot of his timers are delayed. A lot of his hitboxes are kind of shrunk. Not a lot, but... You know, they, they, they did touch a couple of his hitboxes. So, um, I think that was a, a good step in the right direction. 
However, Morty still has a lot of tools in his kit, and as you get better at Morty, he becomes basically just broken again. So he 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 will serve you right, and I think he's actually above Wonder Woman. I lied. No, he's not. <laughs> Is he above Shaggy? All right, I think he's there. I think he's there. He's not hard to play at all. Um, but once he, like again, when a character has a lot of tools in their kit. At least for this game, players assume that the character is just extremely crazy hard. That's not true. He has a lot of tools in his kit, but he's like Tom and Jerry. You don't need to use them. You can use them if you want, but you don't have to. The better you get at them, the more you're going to use his kit, but you don't need to use his kit to be effective. So that's why I think he deserves to be in the win some, lose some. You'll win some, lose some. And then as you get better at Morty, um, I lied. I lied at my teeth. There you go. Free wins. Morty's free wins, bro. I don't care what anybody says. Morty's free wins. As you get better at him, um, you don't get more wins. Obviously, once you get once you go against the player that understands how Morty works, you're gonna need to actually play well. And then that's kind of just better of the like the best of each player, like who's better. But for the most part, as as a standalone character, the character will give you free wins. I promise you. Pick the character, run in there, start slamming stuff. You will get some free wins with this character because he's that simple. Um, and he has a lot of tools in his kit. And even though he has those tools, he doesn't have to use them. Once you get better, um, he even takes off further. I will say the little, the, the slow to the rock movement that he does, the little sand rock movement that like shoots up, that kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie. It was necessary because it was really quick. But that definitely toned him down a little bit. Oof. All right, we're going to put him in front of Wonder Woman. I want, I want to say he's free wins, but thinking about that, they actually made a lot of his moves a little bit more punishable than they used to be, and I kind of forgot until now. So the fact that you can punish him, I don't think he should be free wins. He's close, man. He's close, but he's just not there yet. Once you get better at him, though, he'll be free wins. Next up, we have Rick. Rick is interesting. Rick is interesting. So I think they, did they buff him? I don't remember if they buffed him. I forgot. I think they adjusted some stuff. But as it stands right now, Rick, again, is kind of in those similar situations where it's like you don't need to use his entire kit for Rick, Rick to work. The thing about Rick is that his moves are not intuitive. They don't go together. And when you're dealing with characters that have moves that don't go together, the difficulty kind of spikes up a little bit more. You're going to have to get more creative. Um, as an example... I don't know. I'm going to just throw one Wonder Woman out there. Like, every move she has works, and every move that she has, you can kind of piece together when to use them. You, 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 you know, like, it's good because of this. It's good because of that. However, with Rick, it's not as cut and dry of, like, this move is good this time, this move is good this time. It's not that cut and dry. You're, you're going to have to learn which moves are or do what, which moves go with what, which moves are better to use when where. Um, he's definitely along the spectrum of free loses with Arya. I want to say that he's better than Arya, though. Because Arya only has a few way, m ways to play the game. Rick has tons of ways to play the game. Um, but why he's under free loses is just because he's difficult, right? You don't need to use all of his stuff, though, like I said. But I played against some really good Ricks, and you can tell that each Rick is different. And you can tell that each Rick lab different. They don't do the same combos. They don't do the same things. One Rick may go from a dash into a, uh, like the ski dash, into like a, the belt thing, into another ski dash and try to carry you off stage. Another Rick will try to juggle you in a certain way. Another Rick will like zone you in a way. Like he, he's very, he plays however you are comfortable playing this character. That being said, you're gonna have to learn how to play Rick and then you're gonna have to learn how to play the way you wanna play Rick. And after you get past those two hurdles, he then starts to go up in the chain of command. So yeah, those are the two hurdles you gotta get over. How to play the character and then how to play him your way. Like, what are you comfortable with? And then sometimes, based off matchups, you have to play totally different. So uh, I'm gonna put him at free losers. It's gonna take some time. Next up, we have Gizmo. Gizmo used to be broken like crazy OP, but they've been nerfing him, and for good reason. He was really, really strong. Um, Gizmo's still a pain. He's still very good at harassing, still very good at zoning it off and all that extra good stuff. I'm gonna put him under free wins 
because he's very he's one of those characters you don't see that often and because you don't see him that often you don't know what he does and he's also small so the fact that he's small a zoner and you don't know what he does <laughs> he's gonna be painful for you and his hitboxes are ginormous like they're actually just massive they're so deceptive his hitboxes basically be bigger than him it doesn't make no sense so i think that he definitely deserves to be under free wins i'm gonna put him in front of finn because finn finn's free wins only work if you do it right gizmo's free wins kind of just work if you play the character I don't really know how to explain that further, but you might understand what I mean by that. Next character that we have is going to be Stripe. You know, I felt kind of bad when they like nerfed the gun for Stripe. <laughs> I felt super bad, man. I was like, ooh, God, that sucks. I'm going to say he's in a fall under Get Creative. I think Stripe is actually really, really good, to be honest. You kind of already know what he's going to do most of the time, and a lot of his moves aren't that much different from each other i don't know how to really explain that further but like if you see a stripe play the moves kind of look similar they're not but they look similar and so you can react to them almost the same exact way and kind of be all right that's why i think that you're gonna have to get creative you're gonna have to mix people up you're gonna have to really make them like guess what you're gonna do next and once you get that down packed you'll be all right next to what we have is black adam so black adam used to be a terror but they nerfed him quite a bit and i think that it was solid but i also think it hurt him quite a bit i think he's gonna be under win some lose some black adam has like he's kind of good at a lot of things but he's not great at anything i don't know like he's He's a, he's a, he's very versatile. He's a master of none though. What's that saying? Good at, good at everything, master at none. Something like that. He's not amazing at anything, but he can do everything. It's weird, but that's how he works. That being said, he, he still doesn't need to play like a God to like win, but you definitely need to play good with him in order to get some wins. But I think he's all right. I think he's just kind of good at everything. So. You know, no matter how you play him, it should work out in your favor every now and then. Then once you get good at him, I think he can go up a little bit higher. Like, not higher in terms of free wins, but just kind of a little bit more to the front of this line here. Next that we have is Marvin. So, <laughs> Marvin the Martian. Again, this is one of those characters that are kind of telegraphed. You understand their game plan like that. You know exactly what he's going to do. You know exactly how he's going to play. The only thing that makes him a pain is the fact that he has a lot of projectiles. But you understand his game plan. If you play against one Marvin, you played against all of them. You understand his game plan. And in my opinion, you are definitely, definitely going to have to be creative with him because you're just going to be red. And the fact that his kit, he needs his tools for his game plans to work. If he has no tools, if he flops any of his abilities and is gone, like he, he, he is not a character anymore. Like he needs to play the game the right way. And... Like I said, we already know how he's going to play that game the right way. So I definitely think that he deserves to be in the great creative. We're going to put him in front of Rain Dog. I think he has a lot more tools than Rain Dog and Velma, but I do think he's harder to play um, than all these characters in front of him. So I don't think that he should be anywhere closer because he is hard to play. But once you learn him, it's, again, you're going to have to still get creative, but um, you're going to have to learn how he functions and then you're gonna have to get over that hurdle of what else can i do the next character that we have is joker so joker without a doubt free wins i don't even gotta say that man the character is just really good he's just he's just, he's just a good character there's not really much we could say about joker he is a good character it is a very good design it's a very good character i don't think he's broken i think he's a little overtuned i'm not, I'm not old friend he's he a little overtuned but i don't think he's broken i don't think he's busted as he used to be um he's a very good character I actually think he deserves to be, yeah, I think I'm gonna put him here. I think Gizmo and Finn have to work a little bit more than Joker um, to, to work. Like you have to kind of do other stuff, but Joker can kind of just use a couple of things and call it a day and probably win the match. So, um, and he's very hard to deal with as a, as a character anyway. Next person, the Banana Guard. Bro, this character sucks. The reason why I say this character sucks is because he's gated. Like. Garnett's gated, Jake's gated, but like Banana Guard is mega gated. Like, you know exactly what this guy's gonna do. You know exactly what his stuff looks like. And I think part of this comes because in season one, everybody played Banana Guard and played the exact same way. So people got used to how to dodge his stuff now because he's, you know, 
the same stuff. But now he's been nerfed a little bit, a little bit. Uh, but he's also been buffed a little bit too. But he's still gated by the fact that his kit is simple. It's the same kit. There's no variance. There's no spice. It's a it's a like a beginner character. That being said, I'm gonna put him at. I'm gonna put him here. I'm gonna put him here because a lot of his raw damage, a lot of his raw power, is negated by the player understanding how it works. There's no. There's not really even a way to quote unquote get creative because there's nothing to get creative with. There's nothing there. Like you are just gonna have to be. You you are gonna have to use almost all his moves. Like there's no spice to his moves, so it's easy to see what he's gonna do. But that doesn't mean he like is garbage garbage. But like you're gonna have to work to make him work. Like seriously. The next character that we have is Jason. So Jason's my main. Boy, I love me some Jason. Um, Jason is my main through and through. I think he's under the get creative segment. That's hard. There's th there's two ways I want to kind of go with this. So Jason has two issues. One issue is that he's big, combo food. Anything that's smaller than him will clap his cheeks. The other thing is that he's predictable. He only has a few moves that work. The other ones don't. I think he's win. I think he. he I, I think he's win some, lose some. I was gonna put him under get creative, but like Jason has some banger KO potential. Like you just need to smack someone a couple of times and they're gone. With that in mind, win some, lose some. The reason you don't have to get creative is because he's so powerful. Um, and his moves have such wide arcs. Like he has massive hitboxes. So, and the on command super armor into damage, bro. He nasty, he nasty. But like I said, he's big. And I think that's one of the main, and he's slow. So those are the two things that kind of make Jason kind of weak. But I think to the average player, Jason will still kind of start winning games if they play around the, the KO potential of the character rather than like trying to do combos. Just hit him a few times and you'll KO, period. You don't need to do any cra crazy fancy combos. Next character that we have is Agent Smith. So Agent Smith, I actually really like Agent Smith. And I wanted to test out ranked and see how it works with a character that I have no clue what I was doing with. So I hop into ranked with Agent Smith um, first before Jason. I hopped into ranked with Agent Smith and I was like, how does this rank system work? If I suck at a character, like I have no clue what this dude does. And I played about 20 to 30 matches and I was like, boy, this is hard. <laughs> Agent Smith sucks. So why do I say that Agent Smith like straight up sucks? The dude doesn't really have many KO potential. Um, his pistol is kind of a, an accessory rather than a necessity. Everything that he needs to do needs to be in a sequence, an order sequence. It doesn't just fly off the handle and you're doing just I press this button, it works. I press this button, it works. You need to put things together. And the thing is with Rick, all his buttons kind of do some great stuff. With Agent Smith, you need to put things together and all of his buttons actually don't do that great of things. I don't know how he was pre-nerf because I didn't play him pre-nerf. But post-nerf, at least right now, he's horrible. He's awful. He's, he's very bad of a character. I love him a lot. And like I said, I, I've been playing a ton of them and I do want him to be my second main, but he is horrible. Like he is bad, man. It's crazy because he has a lot of cool moves. Like his moves are cool. I just wish they did more. They don't do anything for what his moves do. Like you have to do things to a T for it to work. He's like Arya, but worse. <laughs> Cause Arya, at least like, you know this, 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 bow, you're gone. With Jason, I mean, with, with Jason, with Agent Smith, even if you do this, 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 you're not gone. He has no KO potential, really. Uh, his combo game is really good, but you have to do everything, like, right for it to work. Otherwise, you're going to drop it. Like, he doesn't really have a lot of tools to, like, a lot of, like, reach. He's very, like, compact of a character. All of his stuff is avoidable or has a really long charge time or a very slow animation startup. Like the character is very bad in my opinion, um, but good. It's really weird. Like the kit is good, the character sucks. How does that even work? I have never seen a character like that in any game, but that's how, just, that's how Agent Smith is. I'm gonna put him, I wish there was another tier. Cause like, even if you get creative with this character, bro, he just is not it. 
like at all. You're gonna have to play this guy like really well for him to work. Um, better than Velma. Isn't that crazy? Bro, Velma has to be played crazily well to work. Agent Smith has to be played way better. The thing about Velma is she has tools. He does not have tools. The, the only thing he has is this gun and that gun sucks. So like, what do you do with this character? That's my impressions. But um, I definitely don't think he's a good character. I think he's probably the worst character in the game. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, he, he is bad, bro. Like, nah, that dude sucks. They need to like buff damage or knockback potential or something. He needs more, he has nothing. He needs more. He's just like a cool character, but like no real competitive strengths in my opinion. Like every character beats him with something. Next character that we have is Samurai Jack. Broken, 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 broken to the broke broke of the most broke is broken. Like, I don't care what any Samurai Jack players say. I don't care about what any Samurai Jack connoisseurs say, any Samurai Jack fanciers say. The character is broken and it will be nerfed. I promise you that it will be ner nerfed as soon as nerfs come out. The character is not okay. Why is this character not okay? Every button is a good button. This dude's edge guard game is on point. He does not have to try to do anything. He's also an anti-whiffer. If you don't know what that is, that's that's that's, that's a term I've coined. Now I made that term copyright popping off it. An anti-whiffer is a character that can hit and they'll miss, but because they have multi-hits or fast recoveries, it's an anti-whiff. This means that if you try to juke it and hit them back, they get another turn. This, or, or this means that if you juke it, they'll hit you with something else because it's the same move. Like, the dude is an anti-whiffer. The dude has easy confirms. The dude's fast. Wide reach. The only downside to Samurai Jack is the, um, there's no, like, more or less, there's no true, true KO confirms. There, there's a couple. There's a couple. Don't get me wrong. But, like, you have to be a good Samurai Jack to knock someone out. But the thing is, you don't need KO confirms when your edge guard game is on point. All you got to do is get them on the side of the map. And unless you're an experienced player that knows how to get on back onto the map, you are done. The character is broken. Like, I don't know what they're going to do to change this. Um, initially, on patch day, like a couple of days in, Nobody knew how to play Samurai Jack, right? I already thought he was a bit overtuned, but I was like, eh, you know, <clears throat> it's not that bad. But this is why I wait until, this is why I wait till I play the game longer. This is why I wait to make tier lists. Because when you play and players understand characters and players understand how they should do things, you could get a real read on some of these like characters. Samurai Jack is just beyond broken. And I, and I, I, I he's like broken and unhealthy. So he's like a pain to deal with for any average player. And so, so that's like the unhealthiness of him. But also he's just broke. Like he's just, he's just too much. Just the recoveries, the speeds, the KO potential through his um, triple shot hit or whatever, the, the edge guard potential. Like it's crazy. And I'm not saying that he's broken because I lose to Samurai Jack all the time. I don't. But the thing is you could do whatever you want with this character and it will work. There is no weakness to Samurai Jack. The only weakness you have is like, you're gonna have like somebody say, well, if you parry him and then, and, and, no, okay, get that out of here. Well, if you dodge the, well, it's telegraph, no, no, and no. The dude has no weakness. If you feel Samurai Jack has a weakness, you BSing right now. The character is too good. He needs more of a weakness to show. That's all, that's all I'm gonna say. Now, I know Samurai Jack comments about to come in hot. I mean, a lot of y'all comments are coming come in hot. That's how Tila's work, you know? But um, I expect to see some Samurai Jack comments because y'all about to be wild and like, Samurai Jack is not broken. Samurai Jack is perfect. Y'all some liars. Y'all some liars. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed the tier list. That is the tier list for today. Um, an hour long tier, that's pretty long. I didn't think it's gonna be that long. Um, if you guys wanna see a 2v2 tier list, which characters are better in the ranked 2v2, let me know and I could pump one of those out. Um, they obviously never match the 1v1. They will be different because it's a 2v2 type of thing. But um, thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Until next time, you know what I always say. Thank you guys for doing what? Popping often, will often. Wow.